guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how to prepare for the CCS exam. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, the big kahuna, the CCS, the gold standard of medical coding credentials. This says that you have mastered inpatient coding and outpatient coding. This is why it is the certified coding specialist. You know, inpatient coding, outpatient coding. You can code with a CPT book and you can code with the ICD-10 PCS book. Now, this takes a lot. It takes a lot of study. It takes a lot of endurance. And there's a lot of people with these fast-paced medical coding programs that tell their students, hey, um, go ahead and try to sit for the CCS because, you know, we've prepared you enough. When you go through a program that's two months, that's not long enough. That's not long enough to know medical coding. And I don't care if you have a medical background or not, because medical coding is a completely different animal when it comes to learning it and practicing with it. So the thing that I tell everybody that is asking me for advice, because this, this, it comes in waves, like it's very cyclical uh, with these questions. And the CCS question I keep getting, even though I've done a ton of videos, I can look through my videos, type in CCS, and about a dozen of them come up. So that's how many videos I've done and I still get the question. And I get the question, hey Blue, what workbooks do you recommend? Again, all of the books that I recommend are in the description box below. And it will tell you the title so you don't even have to click on the Amazon affiliate links, okay? So feel free to not uh, click on those links if you don't want to. I'm not trying to sit here and push those links on you guys because I have the titles. If I was really after the Amazon affiliate, I wouldn't put the titles, right? So, um, but I do recommend that you go through the description box and look at all the books that I recommend. Now, when it comes to the CCS exam, and I'm gonna be reading directly from the AHIMA website, I will leave this link, this describing the CCS exam in the description box below also. So I want to start off by saying um, the pass-fail rates for this exam. Now, the reason that I'm saying the pass-fail rates of this exam first is because I want you guys to know the seriousness of this exam. There was a movie that came out in 2001. Uh, it was Fast and the Furious, right? Everybody remembers the first Fast and the Furious movie. There's a line in this movie that says, you can't get into the ring with Ali just because you think you can box, right? So it kind of translates into coding, meaning that you really need to be prepared. You really have to do your homework when it comes to sitting for this exam. This is not just an exam where you can just go and just oh, randomly try to pass. You have to be conditioned and prepared. And the reason that I share my advice to all of you on my YouTube channel for free is because I want you guys to set yourself up for success and know that what you're getting into, okay, when it comes to this, this particular exam. But let's talk about the pass-fail rates of this exam. So AHIMA always posts, and in, in every three years, it always posts the last three years of the pass-fail rates for the exams. For the CCS, back in 2019, there were 1,990 first-time CCS exam test takers. 80% of them passed. That's, it's respectable, okay? Um, in 2020, um, there were 2,374 first-time CCS exam test takers. 83% of them passed. All right, did a little bit better the second year, okay. But in 2021, in 2021, there were 2,250 first-time test takers. 42% of them passed on the first try. This is how difficult this exam is. You cannot take this lightly, folks. You cannot take this lightly. And as somebody who has taken it, uh, I can tell you that this will pack a punch. This exam is not for the faint at heart. This exam is definitely not for people who are trying to speed through a, a course and then try to speed through this exam. It is roughly two minutes per question average, all right? So you need speed. You have to be able to read fast. And it's broken up into two sections. There's a multiple choice, and then you have your case studies section, all right? So um, we don't even know how many questions there are because they have a range of questions. And no two coding exams are the same. Everybody's coding exam is different, 
which is why I tell you guys to stay out of those Facebook medical coding groups um, that talk about the exams um, because they always trash talk the exams and people get scared because they think that they're going to have the same exam as somebody else who didn't do as well. All right. And so then it kind of puts them off from from even taking the exam sometimes, which I think is unfortunate. But, you know, if, if it was that easy to scare you off, then this is probably not for you in the first place. Um, but this exam is between 115 and 140 questions. Now, when I took this exam myself back in um, in November of last year in 2021, <laughs> uh, I I had eight minutes left on the clock. That was how close I was cutting it to running out of time. When I took the CCSP back in the spring of 2021, uh, I had an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes still left to go on the clock. That's how fast I got through that one. But that's all outpatient coding. And I have been in outpatient coding since I started. <laughs> um, but when it comes to the, that inpatient side, that one was what slowed me down a little bit because I had to really think and I had been studying for months. So I recommend that you read your coding guidelines in their entirety once per week. Um, a lot of you will send me emails complaining, oh no boo, I don't want to do that. Well, if you don't want to do that, I'm just trying to help set you up for success. If you can find another way, that's up to you. But I'm a veteran who's taken a HEMA exams three times and passed them all in the first try. I'm giving you my tips, okay? Now, with um, reading those coding guidelines once per week, you don't have to read them all in one sitting, but at least read them in a chunk at a time. You can spread it out over a few days, but there's something that's going to happen with doing that. You're going to be a faster reader and you're going to know your coding guidelines forwards and backwards, which is very important because a lot of times people who feel confused about um, coding, they feel confused about what they're doing is because they don't know the coding guidelines. And I know because I'm a tutor and I see it all the time when the people who suffer the most are the ones who don't know their coding guidelines. And these are simple things, simple, basic questions. And because they haven't read their coding guidelines, they just didn't know. And schools will not push this because a lot of schools will not. There are some schools that will pushing reading the coding guidelines once per week because they don't want to overwhelm people. But you have to be disciplined. And this is this is a test that will show your discipline. Trust me. <laughs> it will show your discipline real quick. Okay? So read those coding guidelines once per week while you're studying for your exam. Um, I do recommend the, the workbooks that I recommend. I'm going to say this and I'm not going to say this again for a while because I keep getting this question. And even though I have the book links actually in the description box of, the, of every single video, all the books that I recommend. I've even done videos before about the, the, the things that I do to, um, the, that I recommend <laughs> uh, for you all to study while you're studying for any of the certification exams. So the book that I recommend is the one by the American Hospital Association. It's the ICD-10-CM and ICD-10-PCS Coding Handbook with the Answers. Um, it, you can get the 2019 book, it's cheaper. And it has the same questions as the current year book, but it's, again, it's cheaper. <laughs> uh, but that book is really good at explaining inpatient coding, the inpatient procedure coding. And it also is really good at explaining the diagnosis coding, which some of you, I know it's a struggle for you. So by going through that book and working through every single chapter is going to set you up for success. There's a lot of really good scenarios in there um, that have the answers. It does have the rationale as to how they got those. So it's about taking the time to read those passages and taking the time to work through those books. Now that you can write in. I do not recommend writing, hiding, tab, writing, hiding, writing, highlighting, or tabbing in your books because if you have read the, the um, Kennedy hand guide, it says excessive writing is not allowed in your books. Homemade tabs are also not allowed in your books. Now, the tabs, if they came with the book originally, like with the um, CPT Professional Edition by the AMA, the book that we all need, uh, it does come with its own set of tabs. So you can tab that book. I do have a video where I have demonstrated how to tab the book because even though I don't recommend tabbing the book, if you're going to do it, you may as well do it right, you know? <laughs> uh, so, um, Again, if you're if you're working through your workbooks, if you're working through uh, your your coding manuals as you are studying, 
It's going to be a lot easier. You're not going to need those tabs. You are not even going to have time to read your own notes during your exam. Okay. So if you think that you need to have notes, you don't. If you've been working through them, you won't have to because you'll be very quick and um, proficient with that book. Okay. So that's what I recommend for studying for the PCS and for the ICD 10 CM portion of uh, the CCS exam. Now, for the outpatient side, for the CPT uh, side of the house, right? I recommend the CPC study guide. Yes, you heard me. The CPC study guide. Uh, I do recommend this because, and again, the link for that book is in the description box below. I recommend the CPC study guide for the CPT portion of the CCS exam because we are all tested on the same code set. Just because the book comes from AAPC doesn't mean you can't use it to prepare you for the CCS exam because that's exactly what I did. Now, when it comes to books, I am a connoisseur of books. I love books and I will make sure that I check everything. I have seen Bucks books. I do not recommend Bucks books because I don't personally like the way they are set up. Now, no offense, if that's what you like, that's what you want. It's totally up to you. But when it comes to straightforwardness, I got to give it to AAPC on this one. Okay. They did a very good job with that study guide. And I do recommend that study guide. Now, um, as far as the CCS exam prep book from Ahima goes, I do not recommend that book. Now, a lot of people will tell me, well, why not blue? I mean, it comes directly from Ahima. The problem is with that book, a lot of people will memorize that book. I know because I've gotten the emails, they'll memorize that book study it forward and backwards or they'll get through their fast paced medical coding program and only study from that CCS book and then they a lot of them fail. They fail because they put all of their um, concentration in studying and they were like well blue none of those questions were on the exam because they're not supposed to be on the exam. If they were on the exam there would be no barometer of how much people understand and what people you know don't know because people would just be memorizing answers just to pass a test and that is not a good thing okay we are responsible for a lot of things as medical coders people have to pay money based on what we select for the codes and doctors either have a have money coming in appropriately or they end up losing money because even if you select the wrong code they get paid too much when there's an audit you got to pay that money back and then of course there's fines so you have to be very careful it's not about just pushing through whatever the provider selected you have to understand if the pr procedure or the diagnosis really does apply okay so again why it is so important so do not put all your eggs into the uh, AHIMA CCS exam prep book basket, okay? Um, this is why I don't recommend that book. I never have. Again, uh, I love AHIMA, but that's the one thing about them that I do not recommend is that CCS uh, exam prep book. Now, the other thing, uh, and you got to work through that uh, CPC study guide, okay? So that's going to cover all of your outpatient procedure coding. Now, to get some more practice on the inpatient procedure coding, the ICD-10 PCS procedures, I recommend getting the Optum 360 coding book, uh, the ICD-10 uh, PCS book, uh, the spiral bound book, because that's the one you can use uh, in the AHIMA exam. Now, this is not an ad for Optum, but you guys know how much I love Optum. <laughs> and in the back of the ICD-10 PCS book uh, from them, they do have Appendix M, like in Mary. It has all of the procedures back there listed. There's a few hundred procedures. And what I recommend doing is going through all of those and looking each one of those up as part of your practice. Because again, the more familiar you are with the book, the more comfortable you are with the book, the better your result is going to be. Because you're going to be more confident walking into that room. And um, in Appendix N, like in Nancy, it has all of the answers and it also includes rationale on some of those uh, procedures. So it is a very good resource. It is a very good practice. You will also learn speed in that book as well, because if you're looking through that book and you're getting familiar, you're making those connections with certain procedures, it's going to make things a lot easier for you. 
Now, um, I wanna cover some of the things that are on this test because the outline is also here on the AHIMA website. It surprises me how many times people will ask me, well, Blue, what's on the test? You know, your job in medical coding is going to be research. Look at the website, guys. Look at the AHIMA website because it literally tells you on the website what is covered on this exam. Um, and you don't want to memorize things more that you want to make sure that you practice and have knowledge of it, okay? Uh, memorization is too overwhelming, okay? It can get very overwhelming and people, it's unnecessary, okay? Just like people who, who try to insist on um, memorizing the coding guidelines, you can't. They, they update every year, okay? So you want to make sure that you are just getting practice and that you're reading them so that you have a general understanding, Okay, so 51%, 51.9% of this exam is coding knowledge and skills. This talks about like applying diagnosis and procedures, um, applying Higgs, PICS, and CPT codes, uh, applying present on admission uh, guidelines, addressing coding edits, uh, assigning reimbursement classifications, recognizing major condition and comorbidity, MCC, and condition and comorbidity, CC. So that's 51% of the exam, right? Um, I'm going through this kind of fast because I'm almost running out of time. Then we have 10.1% of it is uh, uh, coding documentation. Um, it's reviewing health record to assign diagnosis and procedures, codes for an encounter, address, um, review and address health record discrepancies. Provider queries is 8.9% of this exam. Determine if a provider query is compliant analyze uh, current documentation to identify query opportunities. And if you are a member of AHIMA, they do have the, um, the compliant query uh, white paper that they have uh, in, their, in their library that you can access. So there's a lot of really helpful links on the AHIMA website itself. And 29.1% of this exam is regulatory and compliance, okay? So uh, it says to ensure the integrity of health records, apply payer specific guidelines, um, of course think Medicare, Medicaid guidelines, right? Um, and then recognize patient safety indicators and health uh, and hospital acquired conditions based on documentation, ensure compliance with HIPAA guidelines, ensure adherence to AHIMA standards of ethical coding, and then apply the uniform hospital discharge data set, the UHDDS. So that's what's covered on this exam. You need to have a general understanding and a knowledge of each topic, okay? If you feel like it's just, you're not ready as far as like you don't know it, then that's where you need to zero in and really study. But make sure you're still practicing the coding. Make sure that you go through. If you don't know how to code in a certain setting or whatever, uh, look at the answers and go back and sort of retrace how did they get to that. If you need help, reach out and find a mentor or find a tutor. There are a ton of tutors on LinkedIn. I am a tutor myself. Uh, my rate is in the description box below. And so if you're interested in that, you know, reach out because sometimes that's all you need is just a session or two and, you know, just to somebody to kind of help you to you know, like really understand like what's happening here. And um, I do have a Patreon channel. Patreon is a lot like YouTube. And Patreon is where I do all of my coding exercises. I also do crossword puzzles and word finds. Um, I also tr try to have presentations. <laughs> um, but I haven't done them in a, on a regular basis. But I do have slide decks about different topics on there as well. Um, I do a once a month um, live Zoom where it's like a study hall. So if you're interested in that, the next one is actually coming up this Saturday, um, the 24th of September, and it will be at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you are on my Patreon channel at the $10 level, um, that is where you are invited <laughs> um, and to, to have the link uh, to attend that. So if you have a question, you just come on in and you ask your question and there will be other students there. Um, and, and if they have questions, everybody can sort of listen in. Um, I don't do like study halls here because when I've tried to do this in the past, nobody attended. And those are some of the lowest viewed videos that I have. So again, uh, if you want that, you have to go over to Patreon. 
the, my Patreon link is in the description box below. If you want to subscribe for a month and cancel, that is totally fine, but you have access to tons of worksheets and answer keys um, on, on, on that page uh, if you are uh, interested in that. That money goes directly to my education, paying for my education. So if you're curious <laughs> why I do that, that is why I do that. So guys, I want you to take this test very seriously because this is a very serious test. And if you are doing the same thing and perhaps you've taken the test more than once and you're studying the same way, you're sort of using the same materials or you're using the same books, take a look at the books that I've recommended. Um, take, a, take a try of doing or attempt to try to do uh, a study uh, the way that I have suggested, which is going through the ICD-10 PCS book and working through those, uh, working with the um, ICD-10 CM and ICD-10 PCS coding handbook with the answers, also working through the CPC study guide. That's another really helpful way to kind of get you uh, in there to really understand. And again, if, if you need help, you need to reach out and find a mentor or find a tutor. Um, and again, my rate is in the description box below. So. Make sure that you work on your time, work on your speed, guys. Working on your speed is huge with this exam because when it comes to the AHIMA exams, again, two minutes average per question. This is why I'm telling you all to get so familiar with your books that you will feel comfortable enough to not have them tabbed, to not have them all written uh, to heck and gone and just to be able to, oh yeah, I can flip to this and, and be ready and, and I got my answer. That's just my advice anyway. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you've studied today, remember to leave that blue heart. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to, I hope you like, subscribe, and share, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.